Hi, I'm Kaya Simon and I'm going back to school with Student Edge. What were you like as a teenager? Um, as a teenager, I think I was uh, fairly busy. Obviously, I started uh, professional football at a young age, uh, around the age of 15, 16. So uh, I had to balance a lot of my time between my sporting life uh, and my school life as well. Uh, and then obviously my sh social life with um, my peers. But uh, I feel like I was very busy from a young age. Um, but, you know, I, I was doing what I loved. So it didn't seem like I was, um, you know, wasting my time on things that uh, I wasn't enjoying. What about in the classroom? Like, were you always kind of waiting to get out onto the, onto the soccer field? Or did you kind of enjoy your time in class too? Um, oh, I, I think I was definitely um, one of the more sporty people yeah. <laughs> uh, in my year. And uh, I loved PE. Uh, and you know, getting out there and, and really just running around and, and enjoying my time with, with my peers and, and my friends uh, on, the, on the pitch and whether that be softball or football or touch footy or whatever it was, I was, I was out there playing some kind of sport. And um, you know, in the classroom, I obviously um, think that I, I was there and I was definitely um, you know, listening and taking in um, a lot of what our teachers were, were teaching us. But, um, I definitely, you know, was chomping at the bit to get out there and, and be playing some kind of sport uh, when, when I wasn't in the classroom. Well, I understand you came from a touch footy family, right? Like mm. a rugby family. So how did soccer kind of become like your sport of choice? Yeah, so I, I got brought up in a rugby league family. Both my, my dad and my older brother um, played rugby league and uh, it was my next door neighbour actually that in, uh, introduced me to football or to soccer and uh, we basically went down to our local soccer club, Quakers Hill soccer club and uh, as an eight-year-old girl um, I signed up to both that and rugby league that year and um, gave them both a go and I really fell in love with the game of football um, from that age onwards and um, the rest is kind of history. But that's kind of interesting because you know being a professional sports person it's not guaranteed to anyone you know it can be a difficult kind of career to forge. Were your parents on board with this from the get-go or were they trying to get you to you know study something as a backup? Um, I think they definitely supported me from a young age and uh, I think one of the um, fondest memories I have of my one of my first memories of football was only a couple of sessions in um, to, to my training sessions as an eight-year-old and I went home and said to my parents, I want to play for Australia one day. And obviously as an eight-year-old girl, my parents are probably thinking, you know, I'm, I'm crazy. But I think from the get-go, they knew that I was um, determined even uh, as such a, a youngster I was. and. Um, I guess setting that in stone at that age and uh, I think they knew that I was, I was serious about it and, and having, a, I guess, a lot of outsiders saying Kyra is quite talented at, at football, she could go a long way. I think that also um, encouraged, um, I guess, the dream of, of pursuing, um, pursuing that and becoming a professional footballer. So my family um, were definitely there from day one and have supported me. Um, to date. So what happened when you broke your leg at 15? Did you think, well, this is it then? Like, this is, this is over? Or were you able to go, I can, I can recover from this? It was definitely a, a challenging time for me. I was 15 years of age and um, suffered my first major injury um, in the broken leg. So I was out of the game for six months. And uh, I think the, the outside noise of, of, you know, the negativity and people saying that I would never come back really motivated me. And um, drove me to prove those people wrong and um, a lot of people there was comments saying Kai's washed up she'll never play for Australia and things like that and, and, and hearing that as a 15 year old I think that challenge you, challenges you within itself not to mention the physical um, you know setback of having the injury uh, initially and I think that's really what kept me determined and focused to to want to come back bigger and stronger and uh, pursue the dream that I'd set, you know, those seven or eight years ago. Yeah, the idea of, of, of being called washed up at 15, <laughs> I mean, like, so you're trying to prove them wrong effectively and say, no, that's not the case. Yeah, pretty pretty much, and there's nothing more um, that I love than proving, you know, people wrong and proving people that, um, you know, I can achieve something or I can do it, and if I really set my mind to it, I will do it, and um, yeah, definitely hearing that, and and I guess that sense of I hadn't yet fulfilled my dream as a 15 year old, I hadn't yet represented the country and, uh, you know, really, I guess, played to my potential. I still hadn't um, made the pro level yet. So uh, there was so much more uh, that I had to achieve and, you know, I wasn't going to stop until I did that. Well, you got there. 
<laughs> yeah. you got to play in the Women's World Cup. Can you tell us a little bit what that experience was like and not only to play it but to make such a mark with the whole team as well? Yeah, my first uh, FIFA Women's World Cup or Senior World Cup um, in 2011 uh, in Germany and it was a memorable one. We played Brazil for our first uh, game in, in the group stages and there's a lot of daunting factors around that but at the same time excitement and as an 18 year old going to your first World Cup um, was very exciting for me and um, yeah, as cliche as it sounds it was a dream come true that's kind of where I set my mind um, so so many years uh, previously before that and um, to be there in that moment um, in stadiums you know filled with 30 40,000 people and uh, playing the game that you love on the world stage against the world's best players you really can't ask for a bigger occasion and you know a bigger challenge um, than to go out there representing your country and, and doing what you love. Are you glad to be kind of part of of an era where women's football and women's sport in general is getting more attention or do you still feel you know there is still that barrier you know we've still got a ways to go before we're really truly kind of uh, embraced the way we should be? Yeah I think it's a bit of bit of both I think uh, we still have a long way to go but uh, at the same time we have I guess broken down some barriers and come leaps and bounds from when I first came into the, the women's national team in 2008 um, so it's been a long time, but uh, I'm definitely, I, I feel very privileged that I'm a part of this era where there is emotion um, in movement, whether it be just women's football or, or women's sport in general in Australia. What is it like to be a playable character in FIFA? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> when people send me, um, you know, videos or photos of them playing as me or um, pretty cool goals that I can score on FIFA, obviously, that that's pretty cool. And um, I never would have thought that would be a playable character on a, on a video game. And both my brothers are, you know, gamers and... Um, yeah, to have them playing me as a character is, yeah, something pretty cool.